So good morning, how's everybody doing? Yeah. Uh, too early, huh? All right, why don't everybody stand up for just a second. Stand up, stand up, right where you at. Just stand right where you are. All right, everybody just stretch a little bit. Get all those girls out. You know, I'm not gonna talk to you too long. Just stretch a little bit. All right, okay, you can sit back down. Now let's try this again. Good morning. Good morning. It's a good little stretch and get that out, right? Well, as Matthew said, my name is Chris Welsh. I am a state representative in the Illinois House of Representatives. I am uh, so happy to join you this morning. But I want to first thank the ladies of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated for inviting me out to speak. We have to give them a round of applause. All of you are I'm so happy to look around the room and see my brothers in the house. Uh, the men of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. We don't need to see you, brothers. <laughs> the brothers of Omega Sapphire in the house. All right. All right. Any other the, the Divine Nine here? Five Beta Six in the house. Come on. All right. Well, good morning to everyone. You know, we are all in this, we're all in this cause together. All in this cause together. You know, I was telling you I'm an Illinois State Representative. I actually represent the 7th District of Illinois. There's 118 uh, districts, and I represent number 7. And my district includes Bellwood, Broadview, Berkeley, Maywood, and parts of Merrill's Park, uh, north parts of North Lake, uh, Westchester, Hillside. Any of you from any of those areas? Raise your hand if you're from any of those areas. That I am your state representative, okay? I'm gonna say a few words to you this morning. I'm gonna probably ask a few questions here and there, but you know, at the end, if you guys wanna ask me questions, please do. You know, I want you guys to leave here feeling like you've learned something about your state government a little bit today. But I am your state representative if you live in one of those areas. You guys can uh, feel free to come visit me in my office, which is in Westchester, right on Roosevelt Road. I also have an office in Springfield. That's where we do most of our work. Uh, on Monday, I'll be going back to Springfield. We're there during the week, most of the week, and then we come home on weekends, and we do things like this. You know, it's a, a pretty fun job. You guys are welcome to uh, come to Springfield also and visit me in Springfield. Love to show you around the Capitol. That's a really fun job. And to, to actually show you how the government works is a really exciting thing. And I'm really looking forward to the ladies uh, coming down for your lobby day. Uh, that's going to be fun. Please make sure you guys come by the Capitol and visit us on the floor of the House of Representatives. Make sure we get some pictures in. Now, even though you don't live in my district, you know, I'm still your representative. A person is elected in a district, and those are the people that we represent in our districts. But as a state representative, we still represent the entire state. So issues that are important to all of you, those issues are important to me. I have to, pay, I have to vote on laws, uh, bills, before they become laws in Springfield uh, that impact each and every one of you here impact your parents, impact your cousins, impact everybody. So if there's something important to you, you want to talk about it later, feel free to ask me questions. How many of you have ever been to Springfield? Got a few here, okay. How many of you know actually what a state representative does? Who can tell me what a state representative does? Can you tell me what a state representative does? Anyone? You guys are bashful? Still waking up? 
What? Okay, I got a hand. In your loud voice, tell me, what does a state representative do? Does he make laws? Makes laws? He said, does he make laws? That's, that's certainly one of the things that we do. That's probably the most important thing that we do. And you represent the state of the people. Absolutely. That's, 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 we have to represent the state of the people. And if we don't, what will happen? They'll throw us out, right? You don't, you don't do your job, the people get to speak every time there's an election. And they get to decide whether to send you back or whether to send you home. Now, you guys all know how a bill becomes a law? Well, in Illinois, in Illinois, there's 118 representatives. Uh, that's why there's 118 districts. And we are the House of Representatives. We can start a bill, like I did, Matt, to bring your parents to school day. If you guys don't like that, I'm sorry. Because it's, it's now law. You can, actually, you can actually take your parents to school. Uh, you can blame me for that. Now, this, let me tell you how that started. I wrote a bill, and I said, I think it'd be a good idea if students get to take their parents to school. Wrote that bill, and I first introduced it in the House of Representatives. And then I had to get at least 60 of 118 people to agree that they thought that was a good idea. And actually, over 90 people voted in favor of bringing your parents to school day in the house. So now my job was half done. Well, actually, it was a third done, 30 percent of the way done. Because now I had to get the bill over into the Senate. I had to go find one of 59 people, because there's 59 senators. There's actually two representatives in each Senate district. So 118 of us and 59 senators. And I had to go find one of the 59 senators who would agree that bring your parents to school day is a good idea and that they would sponsor it in the Senate and they would try to get it through the Senate. And I did. Senator Lightford, who actually represents the same area that I represent, agreed to carry it in the Senate and she got it through the, through the Senate. And she was able to get all 59 senators to agree that bring your parents to school day was actually a good idea. So what was left for us to do for that bill to become a law? Not the president. We're on the state level. The president is on the federal level. The governor. It takes 60 in the House, where I serve, 59 in the Senate. You can get all of that done, and you still need one person to sign that bill into law. And that person is the governor. Very important person. You guys know who the governor of Illinois is? Bruce Rauner. Bruce Rauner. Yes, he's our governor. So, how do you become a state representative? People have to vote you in. And why would they choose me over someone else? You know, that's kind of pretty much what we're going to talk about here, just for a little bit here this morning. You know, why would you choose a person over another has a lot to do with their brand. And the ladies of Delta Sigma Theta this morning, they're going to talk to you a lot today about the branding of a man. You guys know what a brand is? You guys know what a brand is? Give me an idea of a brand. What's a brand? You tell me what a brand is. Speak up. Speak up. Stand up. That's a, that's a, that could be a brand. Make sure those guys over there can hear you if you speak. How you get your name out in the public? You know, we could probably have a whole conversation about marketing. And marketing is certainly one of the ways you get your name out in the public. But it, it's a little bit different than branding. And when we're done here this morning, you guys got to understand what I'm talking about. You know, probably to understand branding, we probably should understand what the definition of branding is. And, you know, they used to look in this book called Webster's Dictionary. Now all you got to do is go to Wikipedia, right? And so Wikipedia on your phone will tell you that a brand, a brand is a name, it's a term, it's a design, other feature that distinguishes one seller's products from the others. Brands are used in business, they're used in marketing, uh, and they're used in advertising. Branding, gentlemen, 
should perceive both, should, should both perceive and underline any marketing efforts. Branding is not push, but it's your pull. Branding is the expression of the essential truth or value of an organization, product, or service. This is what's really important about branding, and we're going to spend some time on it. Branding is the communication of characteristics, values, and attributes that clarify what a particular brand is, is all about. Now, I'm going to put this in layman's terms for you. A good brand will tell you who I am, what I am, what I stand for. If you know my brand, you know all about me. How many people know a guy named Michael Jordan? You guys know Michael Jordan? And most of y'all little faces I see probably never even saw Michael Jordan play basketball, did you? But you know who Michael Jordan is, right? How many of you own a pair of Michael Jordan's gym shoes? Wow. You own five pair of Michael Jordan gym shoes? How many times have you seen Michael Jordan play? He owns five pair of Michael Jordan's gym shoes. Wow. How many people own some Beats by Dre? Y'all own Beats by Dre? Okay, okay. All right, I got, I got a couple questions about Jordan's and Beats by Dre. Are Jordan's even comfortable? Yes. yes. All right. Yes. Are they cute? Yes. Y'all think they look good? Yes. Okay. Beats by Dre, they sound good? Yes. Really? Yes. You, think, you, think, you think Beats by Dre got really good sound? Yes. Wow. Have you ever tried Bowles? Is that, who's that? So they don't even know who Bowles is. Because Beats by Dre is all about Dre. You guys try Beats by Dre because of Dre, right? You guys try Jordans because of Jordan. You guys know Michael Jordan's story before he became a famous basketball player? Where did Michael Jordan go to college? North Carolina. Did he, go, did he graduate? Michael Jordan didn't graduate? Is he smart? Michael Jordan did graduate. He did go to college. He did go to the University of North Carolina. You guys are pretty good. And he did, he did graduate. Before he became an NBA champion, did he win a championship in college? You're good. He sure did. Michael Jordan won a championship before he became a Chicago Bull. You guys, Michael Jordan has been a champion since he was in college. He won the NCAA championship as a freshman at the University of North Carolina. Then he went on to the Chicago Bulls. Did they win championships right away? No. They lost to the Pistons a couple years. But Michael Jordan was always good, right? Michael Jordan always worked hard, didn't he? Michael Jordan is known. Competitors used to hate to see Michael Jordan on the court because they, they could look in his eyes and they would know that Michael Jordan was just going to outwork him. You understand what I'm talking about? He was just a, he was a superior athlete but he, he always worked hard. Michael Jordan even went to work when he was sick. Michael Jordan would beat the other, the other people when he had the flu. You guys remember that? That's how you build your brand. You build your brand based on how you live your life. You guys understand what I'm talking about? Michael Jordan went to college. He went to the pros, yes he did. But it's also, he worked hard at it. He didn't take it for granted. You know, a lot of people get a good job, they don't even go to work. They call in sick, just because they have sick days. You know, just because you have a sick day doesn't mean you have to use it. You know, hard work really does pay off. You probably hear that from your parents all the time. But it really does pay off. 
Why do you guys wear the Beats by Dre? Just because they sound good? Just because they sound good? What if, what if they weren't called Beats by Dre? Would you even know about them? Exactly. So let me let me tell you this. I think at the end of the day, specifically when we talk about Michael Jordan, and Michael Jordan who hasn't played basketball for quite a few years now. When was the last time you saw Michael Jordan Jordan's gym shoe commercial? Can you think about it? You don't see it all the time, do you? But you know when those new Jordans come out, right? You know, you don't see it all the time. But y'all, all y'all know when the new Jordans are coming out, right? That's that brand, that brand is very strong. Just like you would choose Michael Jordan because he has a strong brain, that's how you choose politicians. You choose politician A, over politician B because of a, a brain, pretty much. You know, if, a, if politician A is a family man, he's educated, went to school and got a college degree, works hard, you know it's honest, you can call him up and have a conversation with him. And politician B, okay, as an example, you know, he's a politician. He didn't graduate from college. You know, you call and want to talk to him about something that's very important to you and you can't call him. I mean, you can't reach him. He never returns your phone calls. Which one are you going to vote for? Politician A or Politician B? Right. Politician A. That's not, that's not a hard decision. And that's how you build your brain. Your reputation. Go to work. Work hard. Return people's phone calls. I'm going somewhere, gentlemen. I'm going somewhere. I'm coming back to you. I'm becoming a man and making sure you build your own brand on that process to becoming a man. Because when I look out on the room, any of you can be whatever you want to be. Any of you. Tell me some of the things that you guys want to do when you grow up. Just give me a couple ideas. You want to play basketball? Stand up. Let me see how tall you are. You know, you can play basketball. You can be a good point guard if you want to be. Give me some other ideas. Where do you want to be when you grow up? Hmm? Basketball player? Any, any, anyone who wants to be a lawyer, doctor, marketing, math teacher? Okay. I believe. You can be whatever you want to be. What do you want to do? Can't hear you. Wow. Wants to work for Google's Expo. I like that. I want to work for you one day. And you're going to be rich. Anything else? Say that one more time. So at the end of the day, no matter what you want to do, you want to put yourself in position to get there, right? So that starts now. That starts now. That starts with the things that you do now. How you behave now to get to where you want to go in life. So I, I just have a few pointers for you. You might not like them, because you've probably heard them all before. But they actually pretty they're pretty good pointers to, to, to live your life by. Number one. Number one. Most important one. Y'all probably can guess it, right, man? Listen to your parents. You know why you listen to your parents? Because I'm one of your parents. Number two, they've probably done everything you trying to do a few times before. And that experience that they went through life with, it's pretty good experience. You should listen to your parents. They know better. I know most of you, who likes going to school? Who likes going to school? You guys should love going to school. Because 
You want to be the manager of the basketball team. You want to be on the basketball team. You want to uh, work for Google. All of that stuff. You got to go to school. You got to get there. Go to school. Finish high school and finish college. Because what happens after your basketball days are over? What happens? Can't play basketball your whole life. Go to college. Any of y'all got girlfriends? Girlfriends, anybody got girlfriends? You gotta be nice to the young ladies, guys. You have to be nice to the young ladies. Especially if you want to grow up one day and marry one of those young ladies. You can't be a, be mean to girls and then expect a girl to want to marry you. You know, don't call young ladies out of their names. Would you call your mother out of her name? Exactly. You call her mom. You always want to be respectful to young ladies. Don't ever call them out of their names. You know, you do it once. You're like, oh, I did it once, I'll do it again. And you start getting bad habits. That's a bad habit to have. Always treat young ladies respectfully. You know, I'm looking at all of you this morning. I'm really impressed with the young men that I see. You know, I, I think you guys are all dressed appropriately this morning. You should do that every day, every single day. A lot of guys nowadays like to walk around with pants half down their butt. And I have, a, I have a, a little brother. Every time I see him, he's got his pants hanging down his butt and I make him pull them up. You know, y'all got on underwear? Y'all got on underwear? That's why it's called underwear. It's under your clothes. They're not meant to be seen. Keep your pants pulled up, gentlemen. You guys even know what Pants half down, even me. Who can tell me what it really means? Tell me what it really means. Don't laugh. Who, what does it mean? We're having a real discussion this morning. You guys are laughing. But there were things that happened when young men used to go to prison. And they would wear their clothes a certain way. For, for signals in prison. That's why they wore their clothes that way. We don't do that. We dress in an appropriate way. Keep your clothes pulled up. Wear a belt. You know, you're starting now. When you go to school, young ladies are looking at you. They're checking you out. Seeing how you look. Your teachers are looking at you. As you get older, and you want to go get a job, and you walk into the person who has to hire you, you don't think they're looking at you before you even open your mouth? All of that is very important. Google a picture of Michael Jordan and Dr. Dre right now. If you Google a picture of Michael Jordan and Dr. Dre right now, and tell me what they look like. Michael Jordan and Dr. Dre always had a nice fresh cut before Michael Jordan cut it all off. You know? That's part of their brand, guys. Google their image, the way they dress. Very, very important. So always dress appropriately. Did you guys get a copy of my pamphlet? Say no to drugs. <coughs> Say no to drugs. Any of you have friends trying to get you to do drugs? <laughs> Say no to drugs. Even if you got a friend who tells you it's cool, man, try this, try this. Say no and then go tell on his butt. Okay? It's, it's not cool to do drugs. Because that can cause you all kind of problems down the road. And even if you recover one day, you know, drugs just are not good for you to have. Okay? I want you guys also to remember something very important. And I, I know you guys are probably tired of hearing me speak. I just want to tell you one more very important thing. Whatever you want to do, try it. Try it. Don't be afraid to fail. 
if you're afraid to fail and don't try it, you'll never know. You know, you want to be a baseball player? Get up there, take a couple swings at it. You know, my older brother was a baseball player, and I used to just go watch him play, and then one day, I just tried it. And actually was pretty good at it. Ended up going to college on a baseball scholarship just because I decided to try what my big brother was doing one day. Don't be afraid to fail. Got a question there? I went to Northwestern University. You guys ever heard of Northwestern? Yes. Northwestern's in Evanston. Big Ten. Had a lot of fun at Northwestern. But more, more than fun, I hit the books. Hitting the books is very important. Don't be afraid to fail, gentlemen. Matt, question? My college GPA? I don't even think I can remember. It was that long ago. <laughs> Did y'all hear that question? They asked my college GPA. It was good enough to get into law school. I did go to law school, too. My brothers in Alpha are going to appreciate this last bit of advice I have for you. You know, I said, uh, don't be afraid to fail. You know, and... and a good alpha man knows that we all know this poem called The Test of a Man. You guys ever heard The Test of a Man? It goes a little bit something like this. You guys listening? The test of a man is the fight that he makes, the grit that he daily shows, the way he stands upon his feet and takes life numerous bumps and blows. A coward can smile when there's nothing to fear. But it takes a man to stand and cheer while another fellow starves. It isn't the victory after all, but the fight that a brother makes. A man who, when driven against the wall, takes the blows of fate with his head held high, bleeding, bruised, and pale, is the man who will win, fate defied. For he isn't afraid to fail. Thank you, gentlemen. Any questions this morning? Any questions? Thank you so much. I enjoyed you guys. But don't be afraid to fail. You can be whatever you want to be. Sachs is a Wall Street investment banking firm that has offices uh, all over the United States and all over the world. So in 1981, um, I started working at Goldman Sachs, and uh, I'm still there today, so I'll let you do the math to see how long I've been there. Um, I'm a native Chicagoan. I grew up in the city of Chicago, the South Commons neighborhood, located like uh, around 29th and Michigan Avenue. Uh, I attended De La Salle High School. And then after I graduated from De La Salle, I uh, went to Northern Illinois University. I uh, <laughs> we got a Husky in the room? <laughs> All right. Um, I started out studying business at uh, NIU. And then in my junior year, I uh, met a gentleman from uh, Lima, Peru. Very interesting young man. Um, he was studying um, political science. Uh, his goal was to be a lawyer. And uh, I had several conversations with him. I really enjoyed our political conversations. Uh, De La Salle is a political high school. It has graduated five <coughs> mayors that um, have been mayor for the city of Chicago, uh, both Daly, Richard J, and Richard M, uh, as well as uh, three other people. So at De La Salle, they really teach you a lot about politics. Uh, my mother worked in politics. She worked in the office of the Chicago City Treasurer. So I, I had a pretty good background in politics and law and government. So my third year in college, I decided to change my major uh, to political science. And uh, I graduated with a degree in political science with ambitions of uh, perhaps being a lawyer. So I, um, I worked for CTA for a year. That was my first year, my first job out of college. I worked at CTA and then um, I had quit CTA after a year, and I decided, you know what, I'm just going to take off and kind of see this country. So I went from coast to coast. I went from Chicago to New York, looked up some friends from NIU in New York, stayed with them, hung out, 
And then I left New York and I flew to Los Angeles. I wanted to see maybe I will live on the West Coast, see what I want to do there. So after spending some time out there again with another buddy of mine from NIU, um, I decided that, um, you know what, Chicago's the place for me and I'm gonna head back home. So uh, when I came back to Chicago, I went to a temporary agency to um, get a job wherever they were gonna send me while I was preparing to take my LSAT. Does anybody know what an LSAT is? Okay, LSAT is just the initials for Law School Admissions and Test. So that's what they abbreviated and they call it LSAT. Um, so I studied, uh, I was studying for my LSAT. I said, I'll give it six months, I'll take my test and you know, see if I can get admitted to all the Chicago law schools that I'm going to apply to, if I can get accepted into one of them. So the uh, temporary agency sent me to a place called Goldman Sachs. I had never, ever heard of Goldman Sachs, never. I had no idea what it was, I didn't know what they did, but once I got there, I found the place to be super exciting. I mean, it was such an interesting place. It, um, you walk in the door and you, you just hear excitement. There's a buzz in the air. You hear trading. You hear um, people yelling stuff back and forth over these speaker phones. Um, my coworkers were graduates of schools like Ohio State, Notre Dame, Harvard, Princeton. Uh, just really bright people that uh, were making a lot of money for the firm. Who in here has heard of uh, an investment banking firm, any investment banking firm, not just the one I work at? Has anybody heard about it? Okay, well, that's what we're here for. We're gonna learn about it today, about um, investing. We're gonna learn about the dollar, of, the value of a dollar. Uh, what do you think about when you hear, I'm gonna invest in something? Any volunteers to give me an idea? Put money towards something. Very good, excellent. If I buy a, well, I drive a BMW, so if I buy a 2015 BMW, is that an investment? No, why not? Because you're spending money. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true, I am spending money, but what makes it not an investment? Yeah, but that's essentially it. The car will depreciate as soon as I drive it off the lot. So if I'm paying $50,000 for this new 2015 BMW, I drive it off the lot, I go a block away, I get hit, and I go, ah, oh, no, you know, I don't want a dented car. I'm gonna sell it. I won't be able to sell that car for 50,000, even, um, even if I get it repaired and nobody knows. Why? Because it depreciates as soon as you drive it off the lot. The value of that car starts going down. So that's not an investment. What about if I buy a pair of Nike gym shoes? Is that an investment? No. Why not? No, run out at one point. Basic, basically, it's not. Uh, you might be able to turn it into an investment, or it doesn't have to be Nike. It could be another brand. Let's say you buy it, you keep it in the box, you never touch it, and 20 years from now, that will be like one of the hottest selling type of shoes, like Air Jordan or something like that, and you can probably get more for it. So depending on the condition that you keep that product in, you may be able to turn it into an investment. But just buying a pair of gym shoes is not necessarily an investment, um, but you can make it one if you treat it right. So we're gonna take a look at a YouTube video about a young man, he's your age or older than a couple of you, he's only 14 years old, a black young man that he is already investing in stocks. He recognizes the value of a dollar. And so do a lot of foreigners. Um, for example, when I travel, one thing I consider when I travel is, how much can I get for my dollar? So I'm, I think I wanna go to a country where I get more for my dollar. So let's say I'm gonna go to Mexico, and I have. I've been there twice. So for every one dollar that I have, I get nine of their dollars, which is called the peso. When I go to the exchange, the dollar exchange, uh, where I can exchange my dollar for pesos, I'm gonna get nine of their dollars for every one of mine. That's a great investment. I can buy a lot of neat stuff there. Maybe I'll buy my suits in Mexico, get as many as I can, or I'll buy something else that I get a greater return on my dollar. Well, that's how it is when foreigners come here. The United States is the most prosperous nation in the world. And 
we take it for granted. So when foreigners come here, China, Vietnam, the Middle East, their children, because their parents teach them the value of the dollar, they're not going to go out and buy a $180 pair of gym shoes. They are not going to do it because they can buy, if they need gym shoes, they'll go buy a $40 pair. They're not going to waste that money. But what they might do and what the parents will teach their children to do is invest that money, that $180 that you have or $200, invest it in the company of the gym shoe company. Become part of a shareholder. Become part owner of the company. And when you are buying stock, that's what you are. You are part owner of a company. The fact that, um, that they're going to be out of style the next day when you buy them? I think that's huh? so, 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 so would I be fair to say that you should be? Would it be fair for me to say that you trust Timberland? Why not? Okay, put it this way. I don't buy them either, right? I'm not asking that because you can't buy every single product that there are. Let me ask about Apple. When you buy that Apple product, you trust that you're going to have a good experience with that product. Yes. Huh? But, but overall, we, though, uh, overall, do we trust that we're going to have a good experience with it? Yes. yes. I, I say yes. Okay. Okay. So, so, yeah, but then I can do that. Okay. So, so, hold on. Hold on. Why do we have that trust? Go ahead. Because of the reviews. Of the reviews. Which come from? Uh, other people who buy the product. Other people who buy the product. Okay. What else? Hmm? Alright, I'm going to move off Apple for a second. BMW, right? We're not driving. I know you're not driving, <laughs> but, you, but you know what a BMW is, don't you? Yes. Uh, and what do you think about when you think about a BMW? Fast. Huh? Fast. Fast car, luxury, what else? Expensive, what else? That it's going to be a good experience, right? And you don't even have one. Right? Huh? Okay. So somebody said when something's not here. Like what's on this thing that doesn't really exist anymore? What? And what happened? How do you guys watch movies now? Oh, <laughs> So what happened? If you're watching movies on Netflix, what happened to Blockbuster? Oh, they, 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 since Netflix is cheaper. Oh, they, uh, they, they have been bought. No, no, no. What, my question is, what happened to Blockbuster? People die out. People going because what? Yes. I'm going to tell you what used to happen at Blockbuster. You said to go to the Blockbuster, you walk into Blockbuster, you look in this wall of movies, hoping the one that you want is there. Right? If it's there, you get it. And two days later, you've got to go back to the store and take it back to the store, or they're going to charge you because you didn't bring it back. But first, you got to open the movie you went. Did they have it, right? And you got to come home, you stick it in your thing, and you play it, and blah, blah, blah. Right? So, and then they had all these physical stores, right? Which is a lot of, think about that. That's terrible, isn't it? Now, what happens? I sit at home. So, even if you think about Netflix, the ball being. So, first, how did Netflix work? Huh? No, before streaming, how did Netflix work? You used to have to, you went online and they mailed you the movie. Oh, yeah. What? <laughs> right? You went to the, you went online, you said, all right, I want to see whatever. It would come two days later. They would send it to you. Now, it was still cheaper. It was better than Blockbuster because I didn't have to leave my house. Right? It came in, a, in an envelope that you would watch it in, and once you got it, you stuck it back in there, and you went to the post office, and you dropped it in the mailbox or whatever, right? Now what happens? So, 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 let me ask you, what happened with it, right? If you think about, 
about their brand, right? Their experience. How do you feel about your experience with Netflix? Huh? The experience is better, easier, there's more options. Do you trust it? Yeah. That's right. So, so we talked a little bit about brands. We talked about trust. We talked about reputation of these brands. We talked about the fact that they're on them. You talked about the fact that they're aspirational, like you want them, right? Which is great. But I'm going to flip that on his head and say, yeah, you're talking about it as a consumer. Think about it if you're a business and that, and that you're making money from it. You're talking about spending money. You should be also thinking about the money that they actually are generating because people are spending, right? So all these things about brands, some of these brands don't even have, right? Like, you know, you, you don't have, you, like you said, somebody said, I don't have, I don't drive, I don't have BMW, but you already know that you expect a good experience from BMW, and you don't even own them, right? Some of these other products you guys have, I mean, everybody experiences Foot Locker, Amazon to a certain extent, Gatorade, you experience these things, some of them you don't have, but you trust them. Right? Okay, so 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 here's what we established. That's what we established about these brands, right? So I have another I have a question for you. I have a question for you. Hold on. Hold on. Are these people brands? Yes. 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 Huh? Wait, no. No. Are they brands? No. No. Okay, let's let's do a little debate, right? You know, just like anything, there's always two sides to every argument. Somebody tell me so somebody who said no, tell me why not. Who said no? Robert, you said no. What did you Oh no, no, there's no middle. <laughs> Robert, tell me why there's no wrong answer, let's just have a debate about it. Tell me why you think no, these aren't brands. Well, I say no because uh, it's not really a company or anything because, because for instance, Barack Obama, he's like a president. Um, there's no company involved in it. It's like just government, politics. Uh, Oprah is just like a, a talk show back in the day. Okay. Yeah. Very good points, Robert. Now, who think who said yes? Okay, go ahead. Tell me your name one more time. Frederick. Frederick. Actually, he can go first. No, no, you go first. They have a brand because of what they do, such as Obama. He's the president, so everybody knows him as the president. That's his brand. And such as Tiger Woods, he plays golf. So everybody, well, his brand is because he plays golf. Okay. I'll take another Another yes. Another any other no's? Huh? Alright, so what did we can somebody remind me what we said about the other brands, the actual brands that you purchased, the consumable brands? Tell me some things we said about. Them. Some some attributes or characteristics. What did we say about? Them? Huh? Okay. What else did we say? said we trust them, we said they evolve, we said they provide value, right? What else did we say? Unless you wrote the answers down, you'll probably not put that down. No, I have no. Google the answer? No, I have no. <laughs> All right. Uh, what else did we say about brands? You got on Chicago Bulls jacket, right? And that was on the last screen, right? When you think about the Bulls, what do you think about? Well, now they are, but yeah. But back in the day, they weren't. That's what I meant, right? So, I'll ask the question again. Somebody said Oprah is just a person from a talk show. That's what somebody said. What else does Oprah do? What else has Oprah done? How do people feel about she Oprah? She acts. What? How do you feel about Oprah? She has her own do people trust Oprah? Yes. Yeah, yeah, they trust her. Because wasn't she the one that did something that happened or something? She is, she is school, right. girls, good. What else? She, she has her own like, TV network, like where TV shows come on her own network, and she has her own magazines. Yeah. So it's like those are worth money themselves. And the people who have, who are going on her TV, her TV network, like the TV shows, she's getting, her network is getting paid for this. 
One of the other things we talked about brands, right? Them being common, kind of common for you. They have influence over you. Timberland, there's a lot of stuff you can buy. Well, you can buy, right? Apple, you can buy Samsung, you can buy, they influence you. Do you think Oprah has any influence? Yes. Yes. Hmm? Yes. Okay. Do you think President Obama has influence? Yes. Huh? Do you think people trust President Obama? Yes. Do you think people respect yes. President Obama? Not all the time. <laughs> right, you can't make everybody happy. You're always going to have some haters, right? That's okay. 